points at the end. You guys can pass it around and look at it up close. The second family is called the claw or the tooth chisel because it's a same rod of steel but it's flattened out into a blade at the end. And the blade is separated into these four teeth. Sometimes five teeth, sometimes eight teeth, whatever. But it's got teeth. The final family is uh, just a chisel. It's flattened out, the rod is flattened out into a, a blade, and it's not got separate teeth, it's just one continuous uh, cutting surface, a blade. That's just called a flat chisel. So uh, the next thing I want you to uh, pay attention to is how, how these three families of tools interact and how they each work to bring out uh, a form, how to form a piece of raw material into uh, whatever shape it is you have in your mind that you're imagining turning it into. A block of stone is your point of origin. That's where you're starting off from, okay? You want to go from here to there. And these are your vehicles. These are the, these are like the vehicles that you use to travel that are going to take you from your starting point to your ending point. Now the punch, or the, the point, that's like the airplane because it breaks the biggest pieces off. It breaks big flakes like this. So it goes rapidly. It travels rapidly from your starting point to your end point. But just like a plane, you can't touch the plane down right at the destination. <clears throat> Say you want to go to Yosemite Park. You're not going to land the plane right there at the gateway to the park. They just don't do that. They land at an airport that's probably an hour or two away from the place you really want to go. It's the same with the punch. You can't use the punch right up until the destination. You have to, it takes away a lot of stuff. When you get 95% of the way there, you put it down and you move to the next slowest, the ne to a slower vehicle, which is the claw. That's like the bus or the, the train that takes you from the airport to the neighborhood of the place you want to be. The claw is slower because it doesn't break off in big pieces. I'd say it breaks off pieces maybe like that big. So this this is the this is the, the size of piece with the punch. This is the size of the piece with the, uh, the claw. Okay. Basically, it's a tool for refining because after you finish with the punch, the texture is very like uh, dug up. It, it's, it's not organized. It, it still needs to be refined. So this, this is the tool for the refining, the first step of refining. The last tool you're gonna use, and they come in many different sizes, is the flat chisel. That's like walking. That's the tool that's gonna take you from, like walking from the train station right to your hotel or right to the restaurant. That's the most precise tool for removing waste. And I would say that the size of the particles that come from the flat chisel are just like, you know, like sand, little grains. That's the tool that's going to make these details, these uh, shape the, the line, and, and even just to, to smooth the, the big surfaces. <coughs> the claw leaves, leaves, leaves marks in it like, like raked sand. But when you use the flat chisel, it's like smooth, like you took that sand and just smoothed it with your hand. <coughs> These marks are the marks from the flat chisel. Now, I've worked with a lot of beginners, and sometimes this tool, the punch, is the hardest one to sort of feel like you have control over. You know, they hear me saying, use the punch for most of the work, but it's really hard to feel like you're engaged and you're working with purpose, like it's breaking where you want it to break. So a lot of times when my back is turned, people will say, I think I'll try the, I think I'll try the flat chisel for the early stages. And they, they like the way that it, it, it engages in the stone and they can feel like it's working with purpose. <clears throat> but the analogy to the vehicles is even better because if you start your project with this, it's like walking to Yosemite Park. It's very tiring and you're liable to compromise and change your idea of what you want to do and say, you know, I wanted to go to Yosemite, but I'll just go to Central Park because I'm tired. I don't want to, this, this school is, is so slow. And a lot of times people who set out to make a head with all the details and all the 
powerful forms, they end up shaping something that still looks like the block they started from with some features, eyes and, and mouth etched into it. So it looks more like a SpongeBob head. It still looks square, but it's got the features. But you can tell that that person did not have the discipline to really force himself to, to learn how to use the punch. This is the only tool that's going to do dramatic shaping. It's going to transform the shape of the stone that you started with into whatever it is in your imagination.